It's late February or early March in central New York. Winter's grip on the land is starting to loosen a little as the days lengthen. Slightly warming temperatures are welcome after several months of snowy cold weather. At Heiberg Memorial Forest, a campus of the College of Environmental Science and Forestry near Tully, New York, these first fleeting signs of spring mark the renewal of a tradition that stretches back in history to an unknown time. A time when the first Americans discovered that the sap of the sugar maple tree could be condensed by boiling into a sweet syrup. They shared their discovery with the first European settlers and their tradition continues to the present. Warmer temperatures and longer days stimulate the trees to begin the growing season. The immature leaves hidden in the buds of the trees call for food. The trees begin pumping the sap produced last summer up the trunk from the roots where it has been stored since the fall. For about the next six weeks, until leaves emerge from the buds, the sap is just right to be turned into syrup. The methods for extracting sap have evolved over time. At first, the trees were slashed with an ax or hatchet. Today, holes are drilled by hand or power drills. Wooden taps or spiles guided the sap into buckets. Every bucket had to be emptied once or more times a day depending on how well the sap was flowing. Metal buckets or other containers are still used with metal taps, but they're hard to clean and bulky to store. Today, most producers use plastic tubing and taps. Here at Kingswood Sugarbush at Highburg Forest, we begin putting up tubing in mid-February when warmer temperatures allow us to roll out the thousands of feet of tubing used to connect our 1,500 taps. Smaller tubing leads directly from the plastic tap at the tree to larger tubing that eventually empties the sap into roadside gathering tanks. We depend on gravity and a small amount of natural vacuum to move the sap from the trees, but some producers use a vacuum pump to get more sap. Preparing to collect the sap using tubing takes two to three weeks. Tubing needs to be strung and attached to each tree. A custom fit is required because of varying sizes and distance. Once the tubing is up, we wait until the return of warm temperatures to begin the process of tapping in. It takes a couple of days for us to tap all our trees. We're very careful not to take too much sap, so most trees have only one tap. However, the biggest of our trees could have as many as four taps in them. Tap holes heal very quickly and never produce sap again. Cold nights below freezing and sunny warm days with temperatures well above freezing stimulate the sap to run. On these days, hundreds of gallons of sap flow through the tubing to our storage tanks. Some sugar houses are built right in the sugar bush and the sap runs directly to them. Many syrup producers have to get the sap to the sugar house some other way. We use a truck with a tank on it. The sap is pumped from the storage tanks on the ground into the tank on the truck. It is unloaded at the sugar house where the boiling process begins. There are several species of maple, but only the sugar maple has enough sugar in its sap to make it worth the effort to make maple syrup. Sugar content can vary from less than 1% up to 10% but the average is two to three percent. It can vary from tree to tree and even from day to day. Sugar content drops through the season as the new leaves grow. It takes 40 or more gallons of sap to produce one gallon of syrup. The sugar in the sap is concentrated by evaporating the excess water in a device called an evaporator. The evaporator provides a large surface area to boil off the water as quickly as possible. We use hardwood dried for at least a year as firewood. This gets us the high temperatures needed for fast boiling. The wood is put into the firebox, which has an airtight door and a blower attached to make a more efficient burn. Evaporators can also be heated by oil or gas. The flow of sap into the evaporator is controlled by a float valve 
that matches the volume of fresh sap coming in with the amount of water evaporating off. The massive amounts of steam produced are exhausted through a specially built cupola over the evaporator. Much of the evaporation takes place in the sap pan, which is the rear half of the evaporator. The deep V-shaped flues of the sap pan are filled with sap exposed to the fire's heat. The concentrated sap runs through a connector into the flat bottom syrup pan at the front of the evaporator and directly over the fire. Movable gates can divide the syrup pan into separate compartments. The thickest sap is isolated in one of these compartments. A specially designed thermometer in the compartment keeps constant track of the temperature of the liquid. When the temperature reaches 219 degrees Fahrenheit or 7 degrees above the boiling point of water, the sap becomes syrup. The boiling point of syrup can vary dramatically with weather conditions so the temperature is used as an indicator only. We keep constant track of the density of the syrup with a hydrometer by continuously testing samples as the temperature increases. The syrup tends to foam up while boiling, so heavy cream is sprinkled into it as needed to minimize the problem. Fresh syrup is removed from the compartment when the density reaches the appropriate point. A valve is opened and the syrup drains out into a pail. Density is checked a final time. As the syrup is drawn off, the gate of the compartment is opened, allowing the next batch of sap to run in. When conditions are right, we can draw off up to two gallons of syrup every 20 minutes or so. Fresh syrup needs to be filtered to remove sugar sand, natural materials that form while the sap is boiling. The syrup is poured into a series of specially designed filters and drips through them into a container where it is stored before being grated and packaged. Maple syrup is grated based on color. A sample of filtered syrup is compared with a set of approved standards. The syrup may be a light amber or fancy grade. Medium or dark amber is also produced depending on sugar content, time of season, weather, and other factors. Once the batch of fresh syrup has been grated, it is drawn off into various size containers. The syrup is canned at about 185 degrees Fahrenheit and heat sealed in the container. Labels showing the grade and location where the syrup was made are attached. Of course, one step remains. The final test is pouring the syrup over a pile of fresh mouth-watering pancakes waffles, French toast, or even ice cream. All wonderful treats made even more delectable by one of nature's most unique gifts, maple syrup. <laughs>